let's turn our Bibles to the book of James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 14. James chapter 4, verse 14. The title of the message is, What is your life? What is your life? James chapter 4, verse 14. Think about what your life is today. So what is your life? And it's a question that many people will ask to themselves and to each other. And, you know, it's a legitimate question. What is your life? Let's look at biblical answers. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 14, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Brother Calvin, can you pray for the message? Precious passes that you hear our prayers, Lord. Lord, thank you for our salvations. Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Amen. Lord, what is our life, Lord? It's just nothing but a vapor, Lord. And uh, how insignificant we are, Lord. And but you said whatever we do in this this uh, glimpse of time, Lord, you remember forever. Lord, just you know how gracious you are, Lord. We're thankful for you. Lord, uh, just pray that, you know, uh, you bless the fellowship, bless the message, Lord. Yes. Uh, whatever we, we think, uh, we speak, and we do, may, may that be pleasing to you. May your will be done in our lives, Lord, um, and not ours, Lord. And I just pray that you fill Pastor Jim with the Holy Spirit. Um, give him the power to preach the sermon that will convict our hearts, Lord. Help us to remember the lesson we learned today and, and apply it to our lives. Yes. yes. Lord, give us the wisdom to understand your words. Lord, thank you once again for uh, the fellowship today and uh, for the service. We worship you, we praise you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The Bible says your life is even a vapor. So you pray for a little time and then vanishes away. So it just tells you that life is short. Life is very short. You just don't know what's going to happen. It is foolish to live as if you're going to live until you're 100 right now because you don't know what's going to happen today, later on today, you know, tomorrow, week from now. And that's one thing for sure. As James asks, what is your life? Apostle Paul answers. Mm. Philippians chapter 121. Let's go to Philippians 121. Philippians 121. I wonder if any of you guys answer this question with this verse. For what is your life? As a Christian, your answer should be Philippians 1.21. The Bible says, Philippians 1.21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Amen. As a saved sinner, your life your life is all about Christ. Yeah. And he says, for to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's not about, you know, you're being a servant of Christ. It's not about you doing for Christ. Your life is just Christ. Amen. Simple yeah. as that. You know, for to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Think about it. To anybody else, death is not a gain. Can you imagine if you talk to a, you know, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or any of these you know, billionaires, is death gain for you? They're going to say no. When they're out of here, they cannot enjoy their wealth and possessions and power and everything else. Amen. You know, tell that to Biden. You know, I mean, maybe different answer, but hey, you know. <laughs> If you talk to anybody, it's death, gain, right? But to Christian, and to die is gain. Amen. Which yes. religion in the world, or, you know, which belief out there where you could say, you know, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain, where you could say it without killing others, right? You know, what we believe, you know, people could call us, you know, your Jesus freaks, you know, Bible dumpers, KJV only, Rachmanai, you know, whatever. You could say whatever. I'm not going to bring out a gun and shoot you for it. 
I'll just tell you that, hey, you know, you know, you're entitled to your opinion, but if Bible is true, if you don't trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, you're going to end up in hell. Yes. But I hope that, you know, pray that you get saved Amen. because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That will be our answer. Yes. But other religions, they'll come to you and say, hey, what you believe is wrong. Okay. They'll bring out their machete and they'll try to cut you up. Right. Right. True. I mean, that's the difference between what we believe and others believe. You know, if you offend any others, even a little bit nowadays, they're going to be like, oh, you know, we're going to sue you for it. Right. We're going to go to the media for it, right? We're going to bring in ACLE. We're going to bring everybody and then start things. But real Bible believers, you know, you don't do that, no. right? Your life is not about causing, you know, trouble, issues, you know, trying to be in the news. I mean, why others always try to be in the news because they have nothing to live for. Right. Man, to me, even if you know, I'm not here preaching or whatnot or I'm just out there you know, as a nobody, you know, I still have something to live for, right? Because for to me to live is Christ, right? But for others, it's like death is the end. So that's all they live for. You know, they have a, you know, this straight line and then they say, you know what? You know, until I reach that death, I'm going to do as much as what I want to do. Right. I'm going to enjoy my life as yeah. much as I can. And along that you know, note, what do you have? Right? You have religion. You have sports. You have education. You have all those things that people live for. Right. Then as Bible-believing Christians, you have to realize, right? Why? What am I living for today? Right? I mean, if you're living for your religion, then that's something that's wrong too, right? You know, what is a common characteristic of people whose life is all about religion? Their life is all about doing something to please somebody who's not going to get them anywhere. Right. Think about, you know, Catholic religion, right? And of course, Pope belongs to something called Marian cult. Why? Do they go straight to Jesus Christ? No. No, they do not. They have to go through a woman, Queen of Heaven, Mary. That's something that, you know, is ludicrous yes. when you look at the Word of God. Right. However, how do people come to that point, right, when it comes to Easter? Right? People crucifying themselves, right. thinking that they're doing something for somebody. And they're trying to appease right? Mary. They're trying to appease you know, God the Father and Jesus Christ, who's like, to their eyes, you know, like an authoritarian dictator you know, who's just out to get them. Because yes. I've seen the photos. I've, you know... I've heard the people. I was in the church when I was growing up. So don't say that, you know, I'm coming from nowhere. However, at the end of the day, they live for someone, which is Mary, but where do they end up? It's not purgatory. It's not. They end up in the lake of fire. Hell, if they don't trust Jesus Christ as, Lawrence, as their Lord and Savior. Yes. Not only we're not talking about just, you know, Catholics, right? You know, we have other religions out there, yes. right? Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, you know, Mormonism, right? We have Campbellites out there, you know? They all live for something. However, their death will not be a gain. Amen. Because for some, grave is hell for them, Right. right? And if they don't do enough to get to their paradise, I guess their being is over. Yes. I had talked to, you know, some Jehovah's Witness friends. And their purpose in life is to pass out literature and they fill the quota. Right? That's straight from them. So you could argue with them. Don't argue with me. And as you fill up that notebook with many, many hours, Right? 
whether you are standing in the corner just holding literature, doing nothing, or whether you're talking to someone about, you know, whatever their doctrine is, right? They never have assurance of anything. They don't know where they're going. They want to be part of that 144,000, <laughs> right? They want to be in that paradise. And it's actually sad because what is your life? Your life is to meet a quota, right? Religion, when you sum it up, when people where their life is religion, they just want to fill that quota, whatever that quota is, right? Whether it's standing, you know, whether it's, you know, blowing yourself up, whether it's, you know, passing out, you know, doing whatever it may be. Right. That's their quota. Then what's the end of it, right? They end up in the lake of fire. Yes. Doing all of that. Then what is your life? Nothing. It was for naught. Right. It was in vain. Amen. Right? You do everything that you think that you did for God. However, you are doing it for the devil, yes. and then you end up in the lake of fire. That's good. I mean, when you think about it, if, you, if your life is religion, man, I could guarantee that you're always nervous because you won't ever have, you know, assurance of salvation. Amen. Right? Because your life is not Christ. Your life is your own and your churches, you know, your denomination and your religion. When you rely on anything other than Jesus Christ for your salvation, and in order to go to, say, heaven or paradise, that thing becomes your religion, right. and that thing is your life. And for some, that's, right, education, right. right? For some, that's, like, their wealth and whatever it may be. When you take out a Bible, just take out one or two verses and say, that's the right doctrine, then you're wrong. You have to say it in a context Amen. from cover to cover. Yes. That's why dispensational is very, very important. Yes. Then if your life has been and is religion, then you have to think about, hey, what am I living for, right? Am I living, you know, even like regular Christian denominations, right? Fundamentalists. I am a Baptist, or you could say I'm a Methodist, right? I'm a Presbyterian, right? But whatever it may be out there, charismatic, then well, why do you live for? What is it? Because your goal in life is to do something good that you do well. Now listen carefully. So your God becomes what you do well. It's, your God is not Lord Jesus Christ. Your God is what you do well. Right. That's where, you know, preachers could fall into that trap. Your ministry becomes your life now. Your life isn't about Jesus Christ. Your life is ministry. Your life becomes YouTube channel. Your life becomes whatever, everything that you do for the ministry. And you think you're good at it, right? Like you're, you're pretty good at witnessing. So now it's all about that. And then you put emphasis on those things that you do well in the ministry, and then that takes place of Jesus Christ. It becomes secondary, right? You come, you come to church, and then you're good. You feel good, you know, because you led some people to the Lord. But then you forget, constantly forget, right? Am I living Christ, or am I living for myself? to glorify myself on behalf of Christ, right? The thing is, you and I are not behalf of Christ, right? You and I don't do things on behalf of Christ. You do it, right? Because Christ liveth in you. Yes. Because he's, he's you. Amen. Amen. That's why the thing is, you know, when you don't live a holy Christian life, what happens? You reflect Jesus Christ in a, such a bad manner that... You know, other people think of the, what you believe as, you know, trash, yeah. right? They think you're basura, right? You know, you're rubbish. Yes. But at the end of the day, you yourself is rubbish, but you're bringing that dirt, dirty things to Christ's face, right? And how much more are you going to defile 
Jesus Christ in your life. When you don't get out of that state where your life sometimes turns into religion, then you have to wake up. It's not only about unsaved people out there. It includes saved people. Yeah. You look at your life, right? What is it? You know, are you doing? That's why it's very important that you check your heart. You don't play violin because you're a great violinist. You don't sing because you're a great singer. You know, you don't do any of this because you're great at it. You do it because you're thankful because you have God has given you privilege and opportunity to do it. So you want to lift him up and exalt him. That's why you do it. I mean, you always have to think that my life is to exalt whom? Right? Jesus. Every religion will say exalt, you know, what is it? You know, Mama Gandhi, you know, Buddha, or yeah. whatever is out there, right? Muhammad, you know, Pope, Mary, everybody out yeah. there. However, according to the word of God, there's only one Lord. That's Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. And you live to exalt him. And if your heart wasn't set on that, then you have to put it back to the right place. Yes. And you have to, you know, get right with the Lord. You have to, you know, repent of your ways and come back to it. Because nobody else can understand Philippians 1.21 except save Christian. That's right. Yes. Man. Who in their right mind will say to die is gain, right? You know. Yeah. But you and I can, you know, with, with enthusiasm, man, to die is definitely gain. Amen. You could, yes. you could get rid of your body, right? Ask Brother Richard, right? I mean, yeah. ask anybody else. Yes. As you grow older, as things happen in your life, and it affects your physical body, man, you want to get out of it, right? Yes. Especially yes. when perfect body is waiting for you, yes, right? And you get closer and closer you know, you know, Lord's coming, and you're like, man, we're living in the end times. We don't know exactly when he's coming, right? You know, don't be going out there, you know, like, hey, hey like Harold Camping, they're like, okay, November something, you know, 7th, he's coming. No, no, no. We don't know. We just know the times, right? Yeah. Then you want to make sure, you want to make sure, you know what? Am I ready to die, right? Sometimes, you know, when you don't know what your life is all about, you don't think about your death too much, right? right? And you're like, okay, you just live your life, you know, just honky dolly and just live this rat race, right? And then suddenly, you know, something do not go well, right? Everything that you planned out, because many people plan things out. You know, some people don't care. You know, they live very freely. They live day to day, right? You know, however, a lot of people plan things out. Okay, I'm going to get to this school when I graduate from high school. When I graduate from college, I'm going to get this job. And after working a few years, I'm going to, you know, maybe get promotion. You know, I'm going to meet this guy and this girl, you know, and I'm going to marry that person. And then this is how it's going to be. You know, by you know, age 30, this is where I'm going to be, 35, 40, 45, 50. For, so people will plan things out in that way. But God forbid, if anything goes wrong in the process, then what's going to happen, right? Yes. What's going to happen during that process? All you would do is start complaining, and you got to be dejected. And then all you're going to think about is, man, you know, what have I done wrong all these years? What have I done wrong all my life? I mean, have I really, you know, lived Philippians 121? No. Right? No, you haven't. You lived a selfish Christian life. That's all you did. And then you're just covering yourself, you know, coming to church and thinking that everything's okay. Amen. Nothing's wrong with you being here today. Nothing's wrong with you listening today. But the thing is, you have to check your heart. Yes. Right? If question, if James asks, what is your life? Right? Then you got to start answering honestly. What has been your life? Right? Has it been anything other than exalting Jesus Christ? 
And as we continue, some people to live is work, right? right? We talked about religion. Now we're talking about work. You have to work to survive, right? I mean, that's given. You know, we don't want lazy Christians out there. Yes. I mean, and in order to be a good example as a Christian, you have to work hard. Amen. And then I, you know, even the Bible verse says, you know, whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. So you have to do your best. However, you cannot let work consume your life. You cannot let work control your life, yeah. right? If you have place to live, if you have food to eat, and you have raiment to wear, then you're fine. You know, what more do you need, right? Then work hard, but don't let that consume you. And I especially don't want, you know, Christians to think that, okay, so I'm just going to live, you know, just bare minimum work life, you know, and then just live my life that way. No, you have to do your best. Yes. At work, you should be the best worker, right? Yes. Even if not the best worker, you should be someone who's known as hard worker, Amen. who works very hard, right? And one day, if you have a good testimony, you have opportunity to witness to them. I mean, honestly, unless you're like drinking buddies, right, after work, even if you're a Christian, you know, don't think that Christians don't drink, right? right and that's a bad yeah. example, right? Yeah. It's not a way to try to witness. But you, you're a hard worker and you have opportunity to witness to someone because they see that you're a Christian and they see that you're not like the others, you know, and then you're, you, you do and you say what you say. And you do what you say you'll do. And then they're going to listen to you. And work it becomes an opportunity to live Christ. Amen. If work is not where you live Christ, then something's wrong, right? right. You, you need to understand that wherever you are, you are to live Christ. Yes. Wherever you are. Right? Not just here at church. I mean, over here at church, it's pretty easy to live Christ. I don't see any of you guys going out there smoking, you know, during break time. Right? I don't see any of you guys, you know, taking out of booze and drinking, you know, while, you know, I'm preaching or people are right next to you, right? right. You know, you're going to avoid those things. Yeah. However, when you're out there, especially people who live for work, right? Because... It can definitely consume any Christian. What is the root of evil according to the word of God, right? Love of money. And what can provide money? Beside from, you know, drug dealing, you know, gambling, you know, legitimate ways, what? Through work. Yes. Then you start loving money, right? You need money to survive. But once you start loving money, what happens? Work becomes your life, right? You want to work more and more and more to get to that point where you'll be satisfied with money. But will you ever be satisfied with money? No. no. What do you think you know, all these you know, multi-millionaires and billionaires, you know, they die in vain, right? Why? Because love of money will never be fulfilled. If you have 30 billion, can you get 40 billion? Yeah, if you try and if things work out. Or you could lose 30 billion, and then you're going to try to get to that point again. So as Christian, are you living for work where, man, I need to get that promotion, right? Nothing wrong with working hard, getting promotions, but it starts consuming you. I need that promotion. And how am I going to get that promotion? Oh, after work, I just have to have a drink with the boss. Right? Then, without you even recognizing that it's wrong, you start compromising. Amen. And with this work, Lord, I'll have more money to tithe. Right? I'll be able to help my family more. You know, I'll be less stressed out. Right? I'll be, I'll, you know, that would really help me with my, you know, Christian walk. 
It doesn't. You will never be a happy Christian, joyful Christian, when you compromise something in your life to fulfill the other. And when I talk about compromise, it's compromising yourself with sin. If in your life right now, work has consumed you, then you have to review your life, right? Are you at the right job? I mean, you have to think really hard. Don't be like, you know what? Work has consumed me, I'm quitting, you know? I'm gonna just call my boss and say, I'm done, right? That's foolish, right? You know? Uh, Sometimes, you know, fanatical people go that far. I'm like, you know what? Okay, you know? There's cussing at my work. There's drinking at my work. I'm gonna quit. You have no plan, right? You don't have any other place to work, right? You have family to feed, right? Then don't think foolish, right? right? You pray to God to give you strength to get through and be a good example. Amen. Because think about all those military folks. And military, you know, is not a, how should I say, nicest place to be in when it comes to culture-wise. And especially if you're a Christian, it becomes harder and harder, yes. right? There are, you know, Christians spread out the whole military. Yeah. But what's the whole military about? They, you know, live in groups, they fight in groups, and they play in groups. And it becomes hard, yeah. right? Then what if that Christians start compromising, you know, at that military base, you know? It's well known that they go to bars, right? and have some fun. And you're like, oh yeah, you know, I need to witness to them. So I'm gonna go to the bar with them and have a little drink and then I'll talk about Jesus Christ. And then half of the time they're so drunk they don't even know what you're talking about. They're probably like nodding their head, right? You know, let's do, you know, sinner's prayer. Yeah, yeah, amen. And then you're like so happy. Like, oh, thank you Lord for blessing me. And then you talk to them next day. They're like, you know, how do you feel, you know? You know, if you were to die right now, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? They're like, well, what, what are you talking about, you know? Do we even talk about anything like this last night? No, it becomes like that. That's why you should never compromise at work. At work, you live Christ as well. Amen. You're that light to the lost souls out there. Yes. They look at you and they see, you know, Maybe I want something that he or she has, right? But if you display everything that they do, they're like, nah, I don't need it, right? I'll just go on with my life. I actually have better things than that person. (laughs) You know, they're always stressed out about, you know, promotions and money and all that. And I'm not even a Christian, but I don't care, you know. I'm a free bird. I just live my life freely. Man, what a bad example you are as a Christian if you were to live like that. That's why, again, work hard, right? Sometimes you need to have that German mentality. You know, one guy came, you know, after the war to the States, and he's a German, and then they offer him a job. Okay, so what are the hours? You know, 40 hours, you know. Oh, tell me the real hours. I don't want part-time hours. (laughs) You know, I mean, uh, certain folks, you know, they work really hard, right? You know, but you have to make sure that you know, as a Bible-believing so-called Christian, you have to work hard, right? Yes. Keep yourself clean, Amen. right? Don't get involved in, you know, this, you know, work politics. You know, yes. sometimes it's hard, but, you know, you know, ask on the Lord to, to give you strength to get through it. Yes. You know, don't Very be stressed good. out about it on your own, right? I mean, if you don't get the promotion, it's okay. Yes. If you did your best, that's not God's will. Amen. Why do you have to stress about it? Right? right? And if there's a bully at work always, you know, constantly bothering you, to think about what Lord Jesus Christ had to go through. Yes. You know, ask Lord for the endurance. Amen. And then when the time comes, just ask him. Yes. Talk to them. Amen. Right? Yeah. Are you saved? A <laughs> really direct question, right? <laughs> you know, they might not bother you ever again. I know. You know, like, are you saved? Right? You know, and every time they see you taking out a track, they get scared and they run away. <laughs> Right? So don't, you don't have to compromise and you don't have to, you know, be a 
you know, Debbie Downer at work as a Bible believing Christian because you didn't get what you wanted. Right. Think about it. It's not what you want, it's what Christ wants, yeah. right? If Christ, do you know yourself better? If you made more money, and if you got higher positions, do you think you'll serve the Lord better? No. I mean, think about it. There are very few who actually do it. You know, there, there are certain Bible believers, you know, who are millionaires. You know, they tie like 50%, you know. I mean, I mean if you had a million bucks, would you tie 50%? I mean, don't answer right now, right? You know, if that opportunity might actually come, and you might just stray away, right? You, know, you might just leave the church just like that. So before you answer, think about it. You know, always ask yourself, have I done my best for the Lord at any job where I am? And if you've done your best for the Lord, leave it to the Lord, right? Where you go, it's not going to be something that you're going to be able to determine many, many times as a Christian. Because Lord takes care of where you go. Amen. And Lord's going to lead you to the right path. Yes. And it's up to you to follow. Amen. And then maybe a year maybe two years, yes. maybe even a week, you'll see and you look back, oh, man, thank you, Lord. Amen. There's a reason why I didn't get that job. There's a reason why, you know, those things did not happen. Praise the Lord. Because you wanted what's best for me. Right. And that's where faith comes in, yes, right? Sir. Man, do you, want, do you want, like, Lord, to hand you everything? Well, that's not faith, right? right. Like, Lord has to be right next to you. You know, like, okay, son, take one step to the right, okay? When you come down from the podium, you know, make sure you don't fall, right? You know, when you open the door, you know, let me open it for you. It's literally like you want Jesus Christ to do everything for you. I mean, he's done everything already. He died for you on the cross, shedding his precious blood. He's done everything he had to do in the first place. And your job is to... Live him, right? Literally. Then, again, when it comes to work, think about what your work life is, right? Do you live for work? Right? Is it? It's what is your life? It's work your life. And it will turn into your life if you don't watch out, if you're not careful, and if you start thinking about money too much, right? Man, a lot of times, why do many, many great Christians fall? Because of money. Because you do need, you know, money to live, right? And then sometimes you don't have enough money at that moment to think about next day. I don't know, we have a lot of missionaries. They have a lot of testimonies where they have few cents in the bank. They don't know what to do. They have wife and three, four kids. But the Lord provides, right? And those who trust Christ moves on. They progress. But those who do not trust Christ, they stop. And they fail. And then they quit. You don't want to be that Christian, right? Just because you don't have something today doesn't mean that you're not going to have it tomorrow. That's right. where faith comes in. Yes. I mean, do you, I mean, then why do you even need faith? Right? And if you know that Lord has provided for you, if you know that Lord said in His Word that He'll provide for you, right? Then trust Him. Amen. He will provide. I mean, if I need 100 bucks to survive tomorrow, then He'll give 100 bucks somewhere. Yes. I mean, that's the type of faith you got to have. Amen. I mean, look at George, I mean, Mueller. I mean, he was taking care of all those more orphans, right? He needed food. He prayed and Lord provided Amen. the next day. Yes. Not, not, you know, he, one thing about Lord is that he doesn't do advance payment, right? <laughs> He's not going to give you like what you need in a 20-year lump sum, right? <laughs> like so many people like, oh, right? Lord. Like, Lord, you know, work wouldn't be my life. You will be my life. If you just, you know, advance me 20 years, I mean, you're a fool. You're going to spend all of it, like, in a month, right? I mean, you'll be in a shopping mall or internet shopping, and then you blow everything, and, Lord, give me something more for, yeah, 50 years, you know? That's why 
you take it day at a time and you have to do your best and whatever outcome is in that day, you know, just go on with it. Amen. Yeah. Don't let work control your life. Yes. And I know that, you know, some people are very ambitious, right? Ambition isn't a bad thing if that causes you to do your best on everything. But once ambition takes over, where you have to be better than someone, where you have to show up yourself to other people, then you have to change. And that's where you tell yourself, you know, I need to stop. Man, where am I going, right? You know, well, what good is that going to come off of it? So you have to, you know, think about your work, right? And for other to live is what? Education. It's all about education. And it's more pronounced than some of the other cultures, right? It's like, it's all about education, right? Yes. It's like, for to live is education, right? And we have a couple of young kids, you know, who's preparing to go to college. Man, I mean, I'm pretty sure at some point, you know, their life is about education. Like, they get stressed out about which college to get into. And some people went through it, right? They're like, oh, man, every day someone's asking me, where am I going today, right? <laughs> it's like almost like someone who's not married yet, right? You know, when are you getting married, right? You know, I mean, honestly, it's none of your business, right? You know, I mean, it's, if you do it genuinely for out of love, yeah, but I mean, if you ask every single day, that's not love. You know, you don't give no space to that person. So, you know, don't stress our kids out, by the way, right? Amen. Going up to them and saying, like, oh, what school are you going to, right? Well, my kid went here. You know? oh, what about your kid? Who cares what your kid went, right. what my kid went, right? I mean, if they done their best, and if they didn't do their best, and this is where they are, hey, they'll do best from now on. So it's not, it's not a, none of your business. I mean, you could graduate from Ivy League, and if God doesn't open the door, you'll be a bum Ivy Leaguer. Right. I mean, if you go to you know, a so-called you know, lesser-known college and God opens the door and you become like a you know, high-ranking you know, you know, personnel there, hey, you know, that's how good it is, right? Yes. That's how the Lord will work with it. I mean, honestly, why do people want to get more education? Why do people live for education, right? You know, because many times it's not about you know, you want to increase knowledge of Jesus Christ and exalt him? No, you do it because you want to show off to other people. You want to puff up yourself. You know, 1 Corinthians 8, 1 says, knowledge puffs up. That's it. Yes. Literally. That's, that's, that's like the main goal of education this day and age. That's why, to me, all I need is, you know, King James Bible. You know, English version, right? You know, I have Korean too, but, you know. I don't need Greek and Hebrew to understand the Word of God, Thank you. right? I don't need to be those scholars out there in all these, you know, you know, liberal fundamental Bible colleges having I need where I need to memorize like five thousand Greek words, you know, you know, ten thousand Hebrew words to understand what the Bible says. Trash. Bible says, "He that hath the Son has life; he that hath not the Son has not life." Simple. I don't need Greek and Hebrew to help me understand that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's fine. I don't need like, you know, some Greek and Hebrew to make me understand better. No. God preserved his perfect word. I don't need any more education when it comes to those kind of junk, right? If you are right now a student, you know, a lot of young people, you still study. Think about what your education is, right? You do your best, definitely. But is educa did education become your life? Man, it's like education has gotten hold of you so much that your stress is all depends on your education. <laughs> right. Oh, man. And then that stress comes from not you per se. It's because from other people around you. It could be your family. A lot of times it's your family. And a lot of times it's friends and parents of friends or other people. You cannot let education you know, be your purpose in life. I and mean, for some, like, you, know, you don't even care, right? 
because you don't care about education in the first place, right? I mean, I commend you for that. You know, uh, besides from things of the Bible, uh, I mean, I don't need to learn about you know physics out there, you know, right. more chemistry, right? right, or biology. No, why would I even want to learn that? Probably maybe I want to puff my knowledge up, then I might go learn, right? right. Or if I want to witness to someone, maybe I'll get more knowledge, right? And if they, if I need to, only way they'll talk to you is if they know if you understand photosynthesis. Man, I'll, maybe I'll learn a little bit about photosynthesis and talk to that person. For that purpose only. Right. Yeah, because there, we have too many things to study in the Word of God. Right. There's Bible commentaries, you know, there are all these doctrines, right? We, we don't have enough time to, you know, immerse ourselves with education. You know, unless it's like necessary that you need to get your degree upon, right? Then you do your best, right? You know, God doesn't want you to lose sleep to make your education number one in your life, right? If you study eight hours a day, take a break and study another eight hours a day, you know, think about what, what is that doing to your life? Is that the right purpose? Who are you trying to please? Right? There's always going to be a balance that's needed. I'm telling you, if you do your best and then you get the result, that's, God will be happy with that. Yes. And people, if God's happy, why do you care about what other people right. think about? Right? When it comes to education, too many people want to please other people. And of course, it's a byproduct of you know, your household culture. But if you really think about what should be most important in your life, which is Christ, Amen. and you've done your best, why do you care, right? right. If someone asks you, oh, what college are you going to? Like, you know, well, are you going to pay for my college? <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to get married? Oh, you're going to marry me? <laughs> you, you whoremonger, you fornicate, adulterer. Right? Do you have someone? Before you ask these questions, right? You know, just think about does that question even make sense? Right? Put yourself in their shoes for a change. Right? I mean, if you live for education, put yourself in their shoes. Do you want it because a lot of you know cultures like Asian culture because you didn't get it, so you want to live to your parents, right? Oh, man, I didn't get into that college. But you know what? My flesh and blood will get into that college, no matter what. I'm going to make that happen. You go to this after school five hours a day, you better study, right? You better study. And I'm just going to see you study. I'm going to make you study, right? And I'm going to have open door and just record you now. I mean, now this is crazy, right? With all this you know, ring and whatever recording system they have, right. they, they just put it there. Make sure that you're studying. Uh, that's a prison, right? Prison. Yes. When you live for education, you're living in a prison. Just think about that. You know, you know what's the worst thing about prison? There's no light. Literally, there isn't much light. Right. You get that maybe a certain allotted time in a day, maybe an hour or so go out there, enjoy some sun, and you're, you're, in a, you're in your cell. And then don't ever think that windows look like that. It's very tiny, yes. and then it's, it's, you know, it's not clear, because they don't want you to escape. If you live your life for education, you're just like in that cell. Man, once a day, maybe, you get that sunlight, you feel like a human being. The rest of the days, you're just in there, stuck there. And what are you living for? Right? Again, do your best, but don't let it become your life. What comes out of higher education, by the way? Right? Let me read it to you. I mean, this is from Dr. Ruckman, so it's a good source, right? All right. Drug cartels, <laughs> whorehouses, Marxists, indoctrination centers. Yes. That's it. That's what higher education do, right? Man, drug is rampant, right? Right? There's whorehouses everywhere. Yeah. 
people, people become Marxist, communist, right? Oh, yeah. Socialist. Yes. I mean, it's hard to find the conservative professors in college, right? If you find one, you're blessed. I mean, kids who go to there, many of them are not downright communist, but they're socialists, right? Then what good is it? That's why you just have to think, you know, it's my life, all about education. Then what's after, you know, so you have religion and you also have work, you have education. And with those, what comes up? Your possession. For some people, to live is all about possession, right? You know, Luke 12, 15 says, beware of covetousness, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. So watch out for you living for possessions, right? Is your life all about, you know, having the biggest house, fences, cars, right? Fences of everything, best of everything. Is that your life? And then that brings about covetousness, right? Which is idolatry. So do you live to get something? I mean, some people do, right? I live to get that car. I live to get that house. I live to get this brand, that brand, right? I mean, that's all about covetousness. Nothing wrong with, you know, working hard and Lord provides you with the materials. But there's a different purpose. I mean, it's, not, it's not what your life is all about, you know. Is your life about Christ or is your life about all these possessions? We know John D. Rockefeller, you know, one of the richest guy ever lived. And his daughter was asked, are you happy? No, we're talking about John D. Rockefeller's daughter. Just think of it as like, you know, you know Walmart children, right? right? You know, just ask, right? Are you happy? She said, no, I'm not happy. You can't tell all the people who envy me, definitely I am not happy. So think about it. Possessions will not make you happy. True. So if you go towards your life getting this possession, that possession, that possession, it will not make you happy, Right. right? All the gadgets in the world, right? All the shoes, purses, you know, everything that you ever want, like jewelry, it's not going to fulfill you. Right. Instead, it will cause you to be covetous. Yes. Instead, it will make you want things that you don't even need. It will make you desire things that you don't need. Why do you think that so many Christians fall? Again, they fall because of a lot of possessions and a lot of bad relationships, right? Right? Yes. You start wanting not just material things. You start wanting a person, right? That's why there's infidelity going on, right? right? Unfaithfulness. Why? Because your life suddenly, or it has been, it's not about Christ. It's about possession. And I'm not only talking about material things here. I'm talking about people. Right. And it's not only about just, you know, just relationship. It's about, you know, leaders wanting some people in their church. Can, can you imagine if I have to, you know, compromise my ways and trying to bring in a rich guy to our church? Please don't do that. Like, okay, so I have to, like, you know, there, I have to, like, flatter them, you know, I have to, you know, eat dinner with them 30 days straight, you know, telling them that you're the best, you're the greatest, you know, we need you in our church, right? Man, you start wanting things that you don't need, what's going to happen? Right. It's going to become your life. That's all you're going to think about, right? Yes. I mean, if you know, I mean, if you're married, then you have... One person that you just have to look after all your life. That's it. That's it, right? Amen. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't hear too many amens. Either we don't have a lot of married people here or yes. everybody's single or, you know, you're just dumbfounded by the question. Just let it, let it go through your brain, right? You are married to a single person. Yes. You're not a polygamist, right? No. Okay, you're, you're married to a single person. Amen. Then you just look at that person. 
and then you just love that person. Yes. And then that's it. Just you two, you're joined as one. Amen. Then don't look at any other person with covetous eyes or heart. Right. Why is it that you think that if you're covetous towards materials that you're not going to be covetous towards human beings? Right. You definitely are. Yes. I mean, people who want certain things, it's just that they want every other thing too. Then you don't want to become that person. If you have the house and the cars that you coveted so much, what do you think you're going to have next? Or you're bored with your spouse? You don't love him like you used to, so you're going to look for another one? Is that a biblical way? Of course not. Then you're going to fall into all these folks, right, where you want to fulfill your life with anything other than Jesus Christ himself then what's going to happen, right? You're going to live a pitiful, backslidden Christian life. Yes. You know, where, you know, there's a famous quote, right? Life is short, death is sure, sin, the curse, Christ the cure. Yes. Christ gave you that cure. Then you got to live for that person who gave you that cure. Why do you want to go back to the sin, which will, which, which one is giving you curses, right? right? Right. Sin will just, think of sin like this. Like a little leaven, right? Like a little disease, right? You know, or like cut, wrong cut, right? Which can spread and, you know, make you die in certain cases. It's just like that. Spiritually speaking, you know, your soul will never burn in hell if you trust that Christ as your Lord and Savior. However, physically speaking, you are still, you know, at a place where your actions and your thoughts will decide where your flesh will go, right? It will go towards, you know, living for Christ or living Christ, or it will go towards living in sin, living flesh, living you. That's why at the end of the day, you don't want to be that fool, right? You know, like Luke 12, 20, you know, like that rich man. Right. He was a fool. Yes. He didn't know what was, he thought he would probably just live on his life. But he was dead. Soon. Yes. You don't want to be that Christian. You don't want to be that you know, unsaved person, especially if you're not saved. Get you need saved. to get saved, right? Yes. You don't want to wait any longer. Come on. Right? For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Bye. Your life will vanish away. Right. It could be today. And it could be tomorrow, you know, it could be years from now, but you just don't know. Right. Then as Christians, same thing. You won't burn in hell, but your life could vanish away. Yes. And if you live anything other than Christ, then you're going to have regrets for a long, long time. Amen. Think about judgments that are Christ. Think about thousand-year kingdom. Right. Look further. James asked, for what is your life? Apostle Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. What will your answer be? Let's pray. Dear Father, we live our life not thinking about what life is. We do little here and there for you, Lord, but you're not part of our life. We have religion. We have work. We have education, we have possessions that has consumed our lives, and we let them run our life, Lord. They have become our life, Lord. Help us to get right today, Lord, and think about what Philippians 1.21 says, and think about what our life is all about, Lord. It should be to live with Christ, not just at church time, but outside the church every day, all the time, Lord. Lord God, I pray that those who are not saved make today the day of salvation. I pray that those who are struggling and who need to get right make today that day that when people get right, Lord. And I pray that during this, you know, last days, help us to have a, that purpose. Our life is to live Christ. Bless the rest of the day, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you.